Hey everyone, so we're going to look a little bit here at the um, ecology concepts of habitat and niche. So when we talk about habitats in general, we think about the place that an organism is best suited to live. Uh, we might think back to the type of biome or ecosystem that we find that organism in. If we talk about those ecological levels, um, this is basically where we would expect certain organisms to survive best. So if we look at individual organisms, there are some that we can definitely think there is one ideal habitat for that organism. So if we were looking at something like a shark, obviously we would think a marine environment, a saltwater environment in most cases. If we're thinking about a cactus, it's also specially adapted for life in the desert. Um, again, that's the majority of the adaptations it has is for life in those types of dry environments. If we think about for monkeys or other what we call arboreal animals, arboreal means living in trees. So in this case, we mean animals that are not only adapted for life in trees, but in the case of many monkeys, um, adapted for warmer climates, tropical climates, things like that. But then it gets a little bit tricky when we start looking at some animals that can generalize into more habitats than just one. So if we think about raccoons, for example, raccoons are able to function well in woodland environments. They do well near streams and they also do well in human cities. So they have a few different places that they do pretty well in because of their adaptability. Same thing here with dandelions. When we consider them, they're able to grow in a wide variety of environments. It doesn't really matter how much human infrastructure there is, they can usually find some place where they can grow especially well. So again, they live in a wide variety of habitats. And then of course ourselves as human beings, we've made it to where we create structures to where we can survive in lots of different habitats, more or less by creating houses and other buildings for us to live in. So now that we've talked a little bit about habitats and we understand that some organisms are only suited for a single habitat. Some can, you know, wing it in a variety of habitats. Now we want to look at the concept of a niche. An organism's niche is how an organism interacts with its habitat and other organisms. A niche is almost like an organism's job in its environment. So this video here, again, if you're looking at the presentation um, as it's posted on Classroom, this talks a little bit about what is a niche in general. Um, it's a few school videos, so take a look at that as far as the connections between niche and habitat. Again, organisms are connected in that way. They have adaptations that make them well suited to a particular habitat, and that's part of their niche. So then when we consider the niches for specific organisms, sometimes we'll find um, common threads for organisms that live in different parts of the world. So if we're looking here at the rhinoceros, the kangaroo, and the bison, we're seeing three different animals that live in three different parts of the world. But even though they're separated on different continents, we know from the pictures that they spend a lot of time in grassy areas. And that's the niche. These are animals that are herbivores. They're grazing herbivores. For the areas they live in, they're some of the larger herbivores in those habitats. So they all occupy a similar niche together in terms of that part that they have in common. When we look at these animals, we've got orcas, wolves, and lions. In this case, we're talking about, even though their environments are not similar, these animals fill a similar role in terms of what they eat and how they get that food. These are all carnivores, so these are strictly meat-eating animals but they are also carnivores that travel in a group. So a pod of killer whales, a pack of wolves, a pride of lions. Um, they're animals that hunt together to get prey more easily. So again, there's a common niche between them. When we look here at different types of uh, trees, again, they can survive in very different environments when we start considering um, basically the function of trees. But again, ones that grow tall and have far spreading branches all have a similar niche. They are all very large, um, what we refer to again as autotrophs or organisms that create their own food. They provide structure for other animals to live in and they help provide structure in the soil too, with their roots. Because they're such large organisms, again, they have a similar niche in their environment as these stationary plants. If we look here, we're seeing several different pollinators, animals filling that niche. So a bumblebee, um, or excuse me, a honeybee, a bat, and a butterfly, all in these different areas. Again, they're helping certain types of plants with reproduction. It's not only 
important that these animals pollinate for um, the plant's benefit, but sometimes we get those benefits as well with any types of flowering crops that we mess with. And then the final video that's on this slideshow, again, if you're looking at it on Classroom, this one's pretty good. It talks about how organisms can have many different niches, and it looks at um, the cottontail rabbit and talks about the many niches that it has. It mostly has to do with the way that it interacts with other animals in its environment, um, including predators, um, other herbivores that it competes with, parasites that can live inside of it. So again, organisms can have many different niches. It's all a matter of kind of the perspective of how it's interacting with its environment. So again, I hope that this video helps to clarify a little bit more about habitat and niche and how they're connected to one another.